don't drop this, don't drop this, please. Oh, I can't read. Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. Today I have one of my favorite videos to film and to watch here on YouTube, and that is a school supplies haul. And I'm including a school book haul because I have a lot of books that I need for my degree and they've all arrived and I'm ready to open them with you. Um, for those of you who don't know, which is probably everyone because I haven't said it that much on this channel yet, I am going into grad school this semester, so in a few weeks, and I will be studying theology, which is not the most popular major. I see a lot of like law school and med school grad vlogs, not really anything else. So if this resonates with you, welcome to this corner of the internet. If that specific degree doesn't resonate with you, I have a pretty generic school hall. I'm going to be a grad student. Come along for the ride anyway. Whew. Um, here's my book stack. These are all 17 of the books that I need for grad school. Well, I guess they're not all 17 of them. Uh, I already owned a few of them, so this will not be 17s if you're counting, which I don't know why you would be, but if you are, it's not going to be 17. But I have 17 books to read this semester, so it's going to be a lot. <laughs> but yeah, let's go through this stack of books from Amazon. I got all of my books in this haul from Amazon because it's just easier. As a theology student, it's a pretty niche uh, concentration. So Amazon is kind of the easiest and the cheapest option for it. I'm going to start with this package. I don't know what's in them. I mean, like, I know what books I ordered, but I don't know what's in what. So I'll find out. I also kind of forgot already what I ordered. Let's do the satisfying pull tab. Ah, so satisfying. I love it. Alright, this has two books in left. Alright, so the first one is Early Christian Lives. It is a Penguin Classics edition, Penguin Black Classics. It has the Temptation of St. Anthony on the front, which I literally only know because it says so on the back. <laughs> but this one is more of like a history type novel. Just flipping through it, we have the Life of Anthony or Antony by Alphanasius. Oh, all the names are going to be so fun in this. And then Life of Paul by Thebes. I can't read. Life of Paul of Thebes by Jerome. Life of Martin of Tours by Sulpicus Severus. And Life of Benedict by Gregory the Great. So that's what's in this. So it's a bunch of lives of the saints, basically. Which is going to be so fun. Some of my favorite saints are in this, apparently. Yay. And then... The next one is, I think, the only real, like, textbook that I needed for this semester, which has a beautiful Amazon rental sticker right over the front of it. It also has a sticker on the side. What is this actually called? A Biblical History of Israel, second edition. Um, I did buy this. So this is my textbook, it's not a rental, but it obviously used to be. I think someone told me that Amazon is going to discontinue the rental service, which really sucks, honestly, because I used that all through undergrad and it was great. But oh well. It also has a Chegg sticker, so this book has been around. It's seen some things. Spine is definitely a little mished up. We'll get over it. It's a textbook. So yeah, we have this self-explanatory biblical history of Israel. Makes sense. <laughs> Next. <clears throat> Ooh, 
So we have a, another Penguin Black Classic. This is The Rule of St. Benedict. <clears throat> this is all about St. Benedict, as the title suggests. Um, the little quote that's highlighted on the back is, As our heart expands with the inexpressible sweetness of love, we shall run along the path of God's commandments. Uh, St. Benedict was the founder of a monastery at Monte Cassino between Rome and Naples. Um, he has a lot of importance in the church, like I'm wearing the Benedict medals, like he has a lot of influence over Satan. Um, I don't really know that much about St. Benedict, so I'm glad I have this book. I'll learn real fast. <laughs> it's a really thin and small book, which is nice because I am looking at this stack of books and I'm like, I'm gonna be really busy, which, you know, it's fair. It's grad school. I wasn't expecting anything else, but so yeah, this is the rule of St. Benedict. It's a little beat up, but that's okay. <laughs> and then we have this, it's another smaller book. I'm glad some of these are smaller. It makes me feel better. I know I was an English major. And I obviously like books, but I do, these are harder books than YA books. So this is On the Incarnation, St. Athanasius, with an introduction by C.S. Lewis, which I'm pumped about. Um, so his excerpt on the back, St. Louis? No, C.S. Lewis wrote, when I first opened his De Incarnatione, I soon discovered I was reading a masterpiece, for only a mastermind could have written so deeply on a subject with such classical sympathy. Simplicity. I, I need to go back to elementary school, not grad school. I can't read. Oh uh, my goodness. Okay. I swear I'm a grad student. I've graduated college with an English degree. Okay, this was translated from Greek. So this was originally in Greek. I like that's translated from what? Yeah. I'm like bouncing. I'm on my bed, so I have bounceability. Um, this book is Holy People, Holy Land, a theological introduction to the Bible. So I think most of these titles are pretty self-explanatory. But this is about the biblical people and culture. Um. So it's by Michael Dawkins. Dawkins? Dawkins? And Matthew Levering. So it says, their reading of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation provides a much needed focus on scripture's theological meaning as a basis for instruction in Christian doctrine. Inspired by St. Augustine, Dawkins, Dawkins, and Levering read the Bible theologically. Following Augustine's catechetical approach to the Bible as distinct from a biblical theology, the authors illuminate central points rather than get lost in the myriad biblical details. Bible spark notes, basically. That's what I'm getting. <laughs> Another book that makes perfect sense to be reading as a theology major. <laughs> then, this one I was intrigued by already when I ordered it. This is Festal Orations by St. Gregory of Nazianzus. Nazianzus? In... don't know how to say that. But it says... In the Orthodox Church, St. Gregory of Nazianzus is known as the Theologian, with quotation marks like the Theologian, a title he shares only with the Apostle and Evangelist John. His reputation and influence in the Byzantine world as both theologian and rhetor are unsurpassed. It seems like this book is a collection of homilies, and for those who are not Catholic, I don't know that term, which is totally fine. Homilies are like sermons, they are longer speeches, kind of, of information and um, inspiration by priests and pastors, that kind of role, or monks. So, this is a collection of homilies, it seems, which is exciting. Um, this has been translated a few different times, so I'm intrigued. To see how the translation holds up. I would love to read this in the original Greek. I'm assuming it was Greek. I don't know, but this is fun. It's also smaller. So yeah, it's a collection of homilies. 
there's a good chance that everything has shifted. My camera died, but we're back. Next book. <laughs> this one came in like a very interesting package. It's like, there's no... These usually come like this. But we have this. Uh, I think this came straight from the other publisher. So... a used book um definitely seen some better days but it's the compendium for the catechism of the catholic church i remember looking this up when i ordered it because i had no clue what this was and i forgot it was compiled or written by pope benedict the 16th which is exciting i love pope benedict the 16th i think this is basically the catechism spark notes edition Basically, it's like all the fundamental ideas of the Catholic catechism um, compiled into like more easily understandable formatting and lessons, which is interesting because you also have to read the catechism for school. And this looks just like the catechism, except it's illustrated apparently. So uh, we'll see how this goes. But if it's easier to understand, and straight up catechism and gives up, gives up, gives us some more information, I will take it. Anyway, next. Trying to hurry this along a little bit because I looked at the time of how much footage I had when I reset everything. This is going to be a long video. So now we have the, f oh, what, ew, mm, it's sticky. Mm, I don't like that. Why is it sticky? Okay, well, it's a little sticky, but we have the first thousand years, a global history of Christianity, which is basically just a history of the time period of the Bible and how Christianity has evolved and morphed and thrived in those years. Basically, that is, that is the gist of it. I'm not thrilled with the condition of this book, but that's okay. We're gonna put some tape on it and like try to rub the gooey stuff off. There was obviously some kind of sticker here at some point. Ugh. Okay. But there's that. It's more of a history book, which is cool. My only issue with all these books is that some of them, some of them, some of them seem kind of repetitive. So we'll see how that goes. I'm excited for all of them, and I'm, I know there's a reason we have them for sure. It's like, hmm. All right. Cool. Box. Oh, these look so new and nice. Oh, I love that. Used books are so much more affordable, and I like giving books a new life. But new books are just so satisfying. Books. Alright. Ah, no! This one got bent. Ah! Okay. We have Chronicles of the Crusades. I'm not going to try to pronounce the authors. Chronicles of the Crusades. I'm excited about this one. Oh, I love living next to an Air Force Base. Um, anyway. Yeah, this is going to be about the Crusades, obviously, from a historical point of view, and with a Christian point of view as well, I'm assuming. Um, it says, I will not for any price leave the kingdom of Jerusalem to be lost, since I came to conquer and defend it. Conquest of Constantinople by jo Geoffrey of Villehardouin, and the life of St. Louis by John Joinville are eyewitness accounts of going to war in the service of God. I'm excited for this. This is, I love history. I love like more medieval time period things. And... I'm excited to learn about this. Yay! Um, we have a, another Penguin Classics edition. This is The Confessions of St. Augustine. I love this book so much. I have read this before. I read it in high school, which I actually have the copy right there. 
but I loved it so much in high school that I annotated it like crazy and there's literally no room to add annotations in that book so I had to buy a new one. <laughs> um, this is a different edition so I have more to my collection I guess. This is all about August Augustine, Augustine's uh, conversion and what he kind of discovered through his conversion and his life lessons and kind of just like his journey with God. It's beautiful. We read it in high school and did not go to a Christian high school. So it's just a really great philosophical piece. You can really learn a lot about philosophy and how to live life even if you're not Christian by reading this. So I highly recommend this to anyone. Love the confessions. All right, the next one is Walking with God, A Journey Through the Bible by Tim Gray and Jeff Cabins. Tim Gray is the president of our university. That makes sense. <laughs> so it's another book accompanying the Bible and going through it and just understanding it better. This one is by Ascension Press and The Great Adventure Bible, which are two very popular uh, brands, companies. And I think they're companies. Um, my brain is not functioning today. It's great. Um, this one got a little damaged in the mail, but that's okay. I'm excited for this. I'm. It's gonna be cool to read something by the president of our university. But yeah, another walk through the Bible from a different author. I moved again. It's, filling this on a bed is not the best idea. <laughs> Why would they do that? Look at this. I could have cut that book. The book that I almost cut is A Mind at Peace, Reclaiming an Ordered Soul in the Age of Distraction. Apparently this is a special edition from my school. I didn't even know that. So this is more of a philosophical book that we'll be reading in our first year seminar. I am excited to read this. It's definitely a different book than the ones that I've already unboxed. It's not straight up theology. It's not straight saints and walking through the Bible. This is more how to live life and how to do this in the modern age and your own soul and mind versus the Bible, which I love, obviously, but it's different. So and then we have, I guess this is kind of more of a textbook as well-ish. It is Ancient Near Eastern Thought and the Old Testament, introducing the conceptual world of the Hebrew Bible. It goes through the cultural context of the ancient Near East, bringing insight to the interpretation of specific Old Testament passages. Great. So we're going to look more at uh, history. This chapter that I randomly flipped to is Understanding the Past, Human Origins and Role. So this is definitely more of a history book, which is exciting. I'm excited for that. Oh, she's chunky. Okay. Uh, the last book I have is Theology and Sanity. I, just, I, I love that title. <laughs> she's a chunky one. I don't know what this is about. It doesn't really have a great description. So we're going to take it for what it is, a Theology and Sanity. I have no idea, but I'm so intrigued. I, this is so funny to me. <laughs> theology and Sanity, whatever sanity I have left after this degree. I really apologize that the angles keep changing. It's just not a comfortable position. <laughs> I could have done better with my placement here. But I wanted the bookshelf. Um, another book that we'll, we will be reading this year that I already owned is The Great Divorce by C.S. Lewis, which I'm so excited to read. I've been meaning to get to these uh, C.S. Lewis classics or signature books or whatever they're called for a long time, so I have an excuse to do it now. And this one sounds really fascinating too. Um, so this is more of like a story format, which is going to be nice. 
the writer finds himself in hell boarding a bus bound for heaven. The amazing opportunity is that anyone who wants to stay in heaven can. This is the starting point for an extraordinary meditation upon good and evil, grace and judgment. Lewis's revolutionary idea is the discovery that the gates of hell are locked from the inside. In Lewis's own words, if we insist on keeping hell, or even earth, we shall not see heaven. If we accept heaven, we shall not be able to retain even the smallest and most intimate souvenirs of hell. Sounds fascinating. I'm so ready to read this. Well, we have that as well. Yeah, that is my book list for this semester. And it's going to be really good. I'm going to kind of play the role, not play the role, because I'm going to be doing it, but like kind of get in the mindset of historian and theologian together, while also using a lot of my English major skills from undergrad to get through these books and understand the Bible. Um, just a little take on the theology degree for those of you who might be interested or just want to listen. I love the idea of studying theology as an English major, um, even if you're not Christian, because so much of literature has Christian themes, whether you like it or not. And being able to understand such an important and prominent worldview that has been existing for thousands of years, as one of my books literally says, is important to just understand humanity, which I think is important to understand humanity. So I think it's a valuable journey to follow and something to study, even if you're not like doing it in school maybe, but like pick up a book, pick up C.S. Lewis. Like this could really change your view of the world, not necessarily in religion terms, but just like worldview and philosoph philosophical views. Same thing with the Confessions, which I literally read in a non-Christian high school, and it was received very well. So there's more to, than just personal faith beliefs, beliefs in studying theology, which is great. And obviously there's a lot of history too, because half of my books are history books, which is great. All right, so now I'm going to show you a quick go through of what I got school supplies wise. Uh, since I am in grad school and I have gone through all of undergrad and high school and middle school and all those schools, I have quite the collection of school supplies. I have plenty of binders. I have lots and lots of pens and pencils and markers, things like that. So I didn't really need to get anything in that way. Um, I did need some new notebooks and smaller things so I'm, i'll show you what i got everything else that i need to fill in the gaps i already had okay so the first few things the biggest difference i think in style that grad school is going to be that so far is that i will have to pack a lunch every day because we don't have the kind of like college dining hall system we have a cafe but not a dining hall so I'll be taking my lunch with me every day. I haven't had to pack a lunch in four years, so I needed some new things. I have a lunchbox that I bought somewhere. Don't actually know where I put that, but for now, I have this bento box. I adore. This is by Cat and Jack. It's definitely meant for kids, I think, but it's this mint green with daisies on it. And then the bottom is this mustard yellow. I absolutely adore this. I'm gonna be so excited to pack lunches in this. And then if you open it, it has little compartments, like a bento box. Um, so that's the first thing. Oh, my eyes are too. To go with that, I have ice packs. Not that exciting. There are the igloos, they're two pack. Got them at Target green and blue kind of matches this the green I guess it was this or blue or purple and pink so I got this easy standard great lunches set the next things I got it's just a crap ton of flashcards because I am going to be learning 
three languages all at once this year. But a bunch of flashcards. <laughs> um, first ones are just the pen and gear ruled index cards. So the standard 79 cents pack. There's a hundred in here. I got one other pack, but I already started it and it's in my suitcase still. But flashcards. And then I love these flashcards a lot. They're from Germany. So I'm um, sorry if you're trying to get them here, but they're these tiny flashcards. So I got a pack of yellow ones. They're also lined. I can't really tell, but they're lined. So got a bunch of yellows. There's a hundred in here. Got some green ones. They're slightly more mint colored. You know, always makes me happy. I got these blue ones. So I thought I could do different colors for different languages. And then I accidentally got these graph paper ones because the top is blue. So I thought I was getting blue flashcards. It's not. I will still use them though. So flashcards. Speaking of favorites, I got two of my absolute favorite notebooks. These are the Exceed soft covered lined journals. And I swear by these journals. I love them so much shiny right now because they have all the plastic covering on them but these are super floppy more floppy when they're not in plastic um let me just grab one that i have lying around this is my asian civ and astrophysics notebook from undergrad but super floppy i love that it just like lies like that the pages are huge and it comes with a pocket in the back which I have currently stuff in so I just love these and I know that they're gonna last for a long time too because they're like so leather bound and nice spines I've only had one kind of come apart and that's because I tore pages out of it that was on me so I've had these for a while and I love them dearly for, for the subjects that I don't really care to last like I'm not gonna go back and look at the notes as much I get five star notebooks because I love those as well but for the ones that I know that I'll be keeping and probably referencing for most if not the rest of my life I like these so these are gonna be for my theology notes specifically like Bible history and like straight theology so that I can reference these often and since you know there will be a lot of those classes I got two they're also more expensive which is a downside but they last so it's worth it then got some more standard office supplies for my desk got refills of invisible tape some amount of tape I got some of this packing tape because I actually like to use this to tape the spines of my books to kind of protect them from spine cracks. It does work. It's great. It's a hack that my high school teacher showed me. I love it. Now that I'm using more of the books that I was used to using in high school, I remember to use this. And then, push pins. I am excited to put up all of my bulletin boards and things on my wall and realized as I was packing up my undergraduate college room that I don't have that many pushpins left. Don't know what happened to them, but I needed more. And these are the clear ones, so they won't mess with any aesthetics. So always nice. Then I got a good chunk of pens, which even though I have so many pens, I have so much of them. It just doesn't feel like a school supplies haul or school year prep without getting new pens so I did scale down I did limit myself quite a lot because I didn't want to just spend money for the heck of it and so I got the essentials that I kind of thought I needed I do need new of these sharpies they're like the push sharpies I love these I used these a lot for teaching last year so I don't know how much I'll need them this year I don't know if I'll be teaching yet I actually have a meeting to figure that one out in a couple of hours I'm hoping I will need them, otherwise they're just nice to have. 
I got some of the G2 pens. These are the 0.7 millimeter black ink pens. They're all black ink, but they have different colorful designs on them. I have the white editions, which are different colors. I love them a lot. They're some of my favorite pens. So I got a bunch of them in black and they're aesthetic and cute. So that was nice. And this is actually something I needed. I got a huge, oh, ouch. Got a huge pack of the Zebra Mild Liners. I go through these. I only use these as highlighters, so I do use these a lot. And as you can see from the book stack, I'll be using them a lot in those books as well. I especially needed like this section of the highlighters. I have a lot of these specifically left in my cup because I just don't use them that much, but I love the gray and the more muted colors. So this is the only pack that they had that had the gray one. And I do know that I will use them all. So giant pack of mod liners is my favorite. And then speaking of notebooks and five star notebooks, I got two of the five star notebooks. I got just a plain white one. They're both one subject. And then this one with a beautiful, flower pattern on the front. I really like this. It's beautiful. It's aesthetic. It's going with my more like mustard yellow theme for this year. Um, this will probably be for my seminar because then I can tear things out and I don't know. It's just less of a note heavy class I'm assuming because my seminars in high school weren't notes. They were just talking. I have this if I need that. And then I have one for just random things. Because I always end up having one of these in my backpack, whether I plan to or not. So that I just have paper to tear out, especially for the classes where I use the Exceed notebooks. Because I can't tear that paper out. So I have this one just for a catch-all of everything I need. It's nice to have. So we have the five stars. Love them. They're great. Moving on. Next, I have a planner. I needed a new planner. It is that time of year where I can get new ones. Um, I've had the... Sorry, I keep like flicking my head. I swear I'm fine. I just have bangs that are constantly in my eyes. Uh, I need to get a haircut. Anyway, I love this brand of planner. I've had this brand of planner since I think high school, if not earlier. I get one of these every year. It's the Happy Planner with the vertical layout. Um, this is the cover that I chose this year. I'm most likely going to be putting on a different cover since I've had so many of these I have options because you can just take them off and switch out the rings and everything. They're very customizable which is something I love about them. I do have a harder cover for them because the brand does sell a hard cover that you can replace. I do have that so I think I might do that. So I didn't really care about the cover at all. But the inside is gorgeous. Um, it definitely goes with the five-star notebook that I just showed you and with my lunchbox. They're very floral this year, I guess. I did like that these have more muted tones this year. I like that they are more neutral because those are the one thing on this planner that are going to stay. I can't customize that from this version. This also has a list of birthdays, which is new, I think, because I haven't seen that before. But mainly, this is what the planner looks like. I like being able to just go down and make my planner pretty and use stickers, but like also totally have everything organized. I adore these planners. I swear by them. Got a new one. Um, I might be doing plan with me videos again. I used to do that on this channel. There's still some up from high school, I think. If you want to go see high school me talking about planning, I do think those videos are decent quality. That's why I haven't deleted them. They're on my channel. I'll put one in the description if you want. But I might be doing some more now that I'm in grad school. So you can see that as well. Now, I have two more things in the school supply section at least. Um, I have 
crab dividers. Finder dividers. I don't know what these are called. Finder dividers. These are also by Five Star. I like these. They're more like plastic. They're not paper. And they have, again, more muted tones as their tabs, which I think is fun. I also love that they have a little design. They're very aesthetic. I do plan on doing a catch-all, like, uh, sorry, um, catch-all anthology type binder this year. Again, I've done it in the past where I just have a divider for every class and then uh, put in all the handouts and like loose leaf paper from that class. So I just carry one binder with me the entire time, not multiple binders or lots and lots of folders. It's just one thing that I can keep and have everything organized, know exactly where everything is. So I'm planning to do that again. That's what these are for. And then speaking of folders, I got a folder. This is for loose leaf paper, of course. I'm not sure how much I will be getting in grad school. It kind of varied by class in undergrad, so I'm sure it'll vary by class again. Uh, I'm kind of assuming it'll be low on handouts, but just in case, I got a folder. This one, I hope, is better quality than the one I had last year. Last year I got the, like, uh, recycled composition, the decomposition brand, and it fell apart in, like, the first week. And I was very, very disappointed because the, the folder was gorgeous, but there's no point if it falls apart in one week. But hopefully this won't. It seems like a good quality. It's more plastic and it's pronged. So if I have handouts or anything, I can use this. And then transfer it to my binder eventually. There's a whole system that I have. It works, I promise. So folder, it's yellow. I love it, it's happy. I like having happy colors. Those are all my school supplies for this year. I hope you enjoyed this rather long and rambly video with all the different angle changes. I'm so sorry, but that is how this is gonna go. I do still have to like fully settle into this room and organize my bookshelves and figure out a filming setup because nothing is set up at all. So that's why this video has been kind of all over the place. We'll get, we'll get there before school starts. I also do book vlogs and just day in the life grad school vlogs. So I will also be posting those in the future if you are interested in that. As you can see, I have quite the book setup. <laughs> so I will definitely be doing videos on a lot of these books. And if you enjoy that, I'm here. So I hope you have a great day and a wonderful back to school season. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.